Hey, how you doing? Justin here again, coming at you this time for a D minor. Now, the other two minors have been pretty easy. The A minor was very similar to an E, and an E minor was an E with a finger lifted off. So, D going to be really simple as well? Do it get into this D minor? Mm, unfortunately not. It's not a particularly hard chord. It's not the big dreaded F chord that everyone dislikes, but it requires a little bit of a kind of an awkward finger stretch for some people. I didn't find this one too bad. I had a lot more trouble with G chord when I was learning guitar, but a lot of people struggle with D minor, so I'm going to show you a couple of little variations around it as well. So let's go to a close up and check out this new chord. Okay, here we are looking at the D minor. Now it doesn't look too bad, does it? I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Justin just said it was going to be a bit difficult and it doesn't look that hard. Well, it is that hard. Now, you can see here the third finger's got a stretch in its fingers one, two, and three. Now for a lot of people that's a little bit difficult. I don't find it that hard now, and some people find that they angle their fingers a little bit like that, which is kind of okay, but I think you're better off trying to get it a little bit squarer on this one for now. So what we've got here, let's start off with the usual. First finger, first string, first fret. Second finger, second fret, third string, and third finger has to move, you can see there, just the way my fingers had to go from here and then go out, it's going to the third fret of the second string. And it's that third finger that causes a lot of people problems trying to play this chord. If that's you and you really struggle with this chord, the other fingering option is to use the fourth finger. Which I must admit, that was the way I played D minor for a long time, was using fingers one, two, and four. It really doesn't make very much difference whether you use your third or your fourth. I prefer using my third these days mainly because I can use a little chord trick called a suspended chord in a slightly more advanced lesson. So I think fingers one, two, and three are better if you can stretch it. But if you can't, you can always go for whacking the old fourth finger down there. Now, when it comes to playing it, of course, if you look at the, the chord diagram, you'll notice that there's no, that you shouldn't touch the thickest two strings. Um, so starting at the fourth string, you should do your strum, pick out the notes one at a time, those three should be pretty straightforward. It's usually this last note, the thinnest string, it just sounds like this for people. And all again, it's the third finger laying down too much. As soon as you lift it back up a little bit, you'll find that that's what will give you that nice roundness in your fingers and it'll allow you to get that note, which is it, the note F actually, um, on here on your D minor chord. It is a really, really good chord D minor, and it, even if it does feel a little bit stretchy, nearly everything that you do that's new, that's a little bit hard, is going to be stretchy, and it's just a matter of getting used to it. Especially the next stage we've got, we've got G and C, which are, again, even stretchier. And one thing that can help with these chords that have got a little bit of a stretch is to think to rotate your hand outwards. So if you've got your hand flat like this, is to think of your thumb down toward the ground. So as you're doing it, to try and think that you're kind of pushing this part of your hand up toward the guitar neck a bit more. That can often help with the stretch. If it's too long like this, it feels it's a bit too, you see your third finger's gonna be a bit long there. So by doing that, it helps curl up those fingers and gets them in a good position. So that might be something to think about there as well. So have fun with your D minor. Now we've got to try and put them together. <laughs> 